Hello everyone and welcome to UVU Rundown. I'm Hannah Bazet and today I'm joined by author and sports analyst Jim Wexel. Jim is an author and has his own podcast on 24-7 sports called Steel City Insider. He has spent nearly 30 years covering the Steelers and just released a new book entitled On the Clock, Pittsburgh Steelers, which follows the Pittsburgh Steelers draft history through several decades. Jim, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me, Hannah. So to begin, why don't you tell us how you first got involved in the sports industry in Pittsburgh? Wow, okay. Um, I was in college at Robert Morris and I was studying information sciences and the teacher had us write a, a paper on the grain embargo in Russia. And I did not read the material and it was terrible and the teacher made me write it over. He said, write about anything. Don't have to write about the grain embargo. So I wrote about Cool Papa Bell of the uh, Pittsburgh and the Negro Leagues, and he loved it, and he told me I should be a writer, not an information scientist. <laughs> so I transferred to Pitt Greensburg, got into the school paper, became the sports editor, graduated, got a job uh, at the local, at the Standard Observer, began covering high schools and Pitt football and uh, the Pirates, and my boss covered the Steelers, Vic Ketchman, and he moved on, and that's when I moved into the Steeler beat in 1995. So you've had a very long career. You've been covering the Steelers for nearly 30 years now. How has the media scene changed since when you first began? Uh, the media is now this. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk around and I talk to the players with the notebook and a tape recorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still write longer. I want to write more in depth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a subscription site, Steel City Insider at 247 Sports, CBS Sports. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, people pay for that and I don't give them the um, you know bullet points the tweets I, I do tweet but I, I it's not I'm not obsessed with it and mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not putting down the young writers it's what their bosses want but you can see the young writers and they're all in their phones yeah, yeah. so you mentioned so that's the difference oh yeah so you've mentioned writing several books so you've written books and then you also have your subscription site which of your outlets do you find to be the most fulfilling for you the most lucrative or the most fulfilling, or both? Um, I mean, you can do both if you want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, well, you know, uh, I, uh, books are fulfilling in that uh, the poem, I did the Polamalu biography, mm -hmm. Troy Polamalu's biography. That was fulfilling in that I'm writing about a great person and I want young people to read it and learn. Uh, you know, he, he had his struggles, and but he knew how to bounce back and the, the key is bouncing back and when and it's not just young people any people when they read how he did it um, how he ate how he slept how he dealt with stress how he dealt with pro big problems in his family mm -hmm. how he dealt with going off to school things like that uh, that's fulfilling in that it potentially teaches people and that's what I'd like to do and I you know <laughs> I write a lot of columns, and sometimes I'll go off. Uh, I, I think of my a gambling column. I, I've gambled for years, and I have lost feel for it. But I know how dangerous it can be. And uh, with the um, crush of gambling, now that it's sports gambling is legal and all the ads, I wrote a column to uh, potentially you know, warn people to be careful with this. You know, all, all of the sports media guys are getting paid to do ads for this. Mm -hmm. It's not easy and it's not something that a young guy should just pick up and think you're gonna, just because you know sports, you're gonna start making money. It's dangerous. Yeah. So I wrote a column about that and I said, for instance, this Super Bowl, let me, let me handicap this the way I used to. Uh, I look at this and oh wow, this really favors Tampa Bay. And uh, I look at this, oh, wow, this really favors Tampa Bay. And the third thing I look at is this, and, and wow, this really, I, I was handicapping on the fly because I really didn't handicap the game before. I had no interest. And I said, wow, Tampa Bay has all the edges, plus they have Tom Brady, plus they're getting points, plus they're at home. This would be, <laughs> this would be a special lock if I was still in, in, my, uh, in my element, in my day. I said, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't. Of course, Tampa Bay won going away, and it was a lock. And I don't know if I changed any minds yeah. by showing them actually how easy that was. But that was a rarity. So that's just one example. And I, I do pontificate at times. And I talk about, uh, I have a morning routine. I read the book, um, The 5 AM Club. 
20 minutes exercise, 20 minutes uh, meditation, 20 minutes of prayer and or reading uh, wisdom. And uh, so I, I expanded that into an hour and a half and I'll write especially about some of the books. For instance, this book here was uh, influenced by Robert Greene's The Laws of Human Nature. Uh, fantastic book. And, you know, if you're going to buy this book, get that one, too, or the law, uh, the 5 a.m. club. And so I write about that. And that's fulfilling in its in its own way that I can potentially help people who, who like to read. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So whether you're writing the Troy Palmolu book you've done or even this one here on the clock, how receptive is the Steelers organization and its players to giving you what you need to write these books? You know, um, I did a road trip book in 2007, and um, uh, the, they played a road trip book where you follow the schedule, and the schedule was set up perfectly. I had a guy who took me around in an a RV, and I wanted to visit Steeler bars, the games on the road, uh, the, um, the players' families, ex-players. Heinz Ward set me up with his best friend in Atlanta. Uh, Greg Lloyd uh, met me at his dojo in Atlanta. Um, but to start the thing, um, it, they played the Hall of Fame game that year in Akron, Akron, Canton. And uh, James Harrison is from Akron. And in 2007, he was just stepping into the lineup. And James, of course, was the meanest guy on the team then. He's the meanest guy in Pittsburgh now. <laughs> but I don't know what it was that he didn't hate me totally. So he allowed me to talk to him. I say, James. I, I want to start uh, this road trip book in, uh, in Akron at the Hall of Fame game, and I'd like to have your address and meet your parents, talk to them. He goes, yeah, sure. Give me the address. Okay, so next guy I go to, Casey Hampton. I, Casey, I want, I'm driving, uh, I want to go through Texas. I want to talk to your parent, your mom, maybe have a tailgate with them, see how to Hamptons tailgate. He said, what? What are you doing? And I just explained it again. He goes, I don't know, man. I said, well, I just talked to Harrison. He just gave me his. He goes, James? J James is doing this? He goes, okay. So, I mean, you get the biggest and the baddest out of the way first, and everybody just followed suit. And Plus, I had a lot of experience, and I'm not uh, um, overly aggressive. I don't, um, I, I, I really I haven't been accused of making anything up. I have the player's respect. Mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say and especially that group was a fantastic group so you know uh, from James Harrison to m friends of mine uh, Brett Kiesel and Heath Miller I, I consider them friends and Troy yeah. they all uh, they all contributed and I, I really like that book that's uh, 2000 it came out in 2008 uh, called Steeler Nation um, uh, it has another eight words to it but Steeler <laughs> Nation if you look it up uh, you can get it at my website, jimwexel.com. It's a paperback. That was a good one. That, those were t championship teams. So you get a real comfortability with players who are champions like that, and you keep working and you keep going. And I don't know. The, I, I, I hate, I'm not bragging when I say they respect me, but it just seems that they do. Yeah. And I, I, I get uh, to talk to them. And I'm, I'm not looking for quick hits on who screwed up and stuff like that. And also... I learned a long time ago, Ed Bouchette told me, don't be the injury guy. I remember Yancey Thigpen in 1996 or something. Yancey Thigpen was a key receiver and he pulled his hamstring. And every week it was day to day, we weren't sure. And every Friday, I'm like, well, how's, how is it, Yancey? How is your hamstring? And he just said, here I come. Here comes the guy who's gonna ask me about my hamstring. And it's a frustrating injury. And so Ed Bouchette said, don't, don't be that guy. Don't be the injury guy. You know, I was a young reporter. He said, you know, what you want to do is, is you want to uh, talk about their college football team. They love doing that, especially the younger players. And they know the players still at their college. And so you talk about that. You get to know Heath Miller has a couple kids playing soccer, and my daughter played soccer. So we'd talk soccer, talk family. Don't always be the guy who wants something. Mm -hmm. and, and not that I'm trying to schmooze them. I actually am interested. They're interesting people. And so they are interested in getting to know you, too. So. Don't always be that guy that wants stuff, especially don't be going up and saying, uh, you know, what do you, th your offensive coordinator really stinks, doesn't he? What, what do you think of the game planning? I mean, there are ways to do that, but if you're the guy that's always looking to stir up trouble, they try to avoid you. Yeah. 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 Well, that's good. So we talked about your past books and now talking about this book. You talk about the evolution of the Pittsburgh Steelers over a series of decades, all of the highs and lows. What was that research price process like for you? 
I love research. I can bury myself in a library. That was one of the criticisms I had of the new Hall of Honor Museum. I said, this place needs a library where I can go bury myself with every <laughs> Steeler book, every article written. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They let me in their basement and helped me uh, with great research. Uh, you know, stories on Wizard White, you know, the, those were the articles of the day. Grantland Rice, the great sports writer of the 20s and 30s, seemed to be the first Steeler scout. And it's funny because the Steelers then tended to use newspaper guys as they went along as scouts, the great Bill Nunn, the greatest, greatest scout of all time was a newspaper guy. Mm -hmm. And so us newspaper guys are proud of that, you know. And so uh, I, I love getting buried in research and finding nuggets that no one else has had that I'm aware of and things that I learn. It's, it's, I love digging that stuff up and talking to people. And, you know, you get to talk, I got to talk to Tom Donahoe again. I haven't talked to him in a while. And that was a fun conversation, and he's, he's uh, you know, he, he's remembering Nuggets, too. And Kevin Colbert, he was very, uh, very giving with information because he's done now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he could talk about the Ben Roethlisberger draft, the draft where he passed on Tom Brady and took T. Martin. You know, he said that'll be on his gravestone, his tombstone. He passed on Tom Brady for T. Martin. And uh, so he was uh, forthcoming because he was on his way out and he knew me well. You know, I've, I've grilled him at combines every year. And, uh, you know, he's guarded with information at draft time. But he knows me so well. He knows what, what titillates me, what, what works in a book. And uh, he was very forthcoming and very helpful um, at draft season. So I love that. I, I love all that. And, you know, you, you know, you, you, you manifest this stuff. I tell you, you know, you, you, you think about, you, you put yourself in the feeling of when Mike Tomlin calls me back for this interview for my Troy Polamalu book, it's gonna go like this and I'm gonna feel, you know, and you put your feelings of how you're gonna feel once the interview's over. And sure enough, he calls the next day. I mean, I haven't had as much success manifesting the rest of my life, but I, I seem to do well with research and the material I need for my work. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we often get to see what the day is like for players and coaches and organizations on draft day, but we very rarely get to see what it's like from a reporter's perspective. So I was just wondering what draft day is like for you. Oh, draft day. Oh, what a wonderful day. It really, I mean, it's a lot of work. Um, but <clears throat> but um, seeing all the guys in the spring, you know, the reporters, we, we, we have fun together. There's, there's a lot of like-minded kindred spirits there. Mm -hmm. And so you get to see your boys again in, in April and you eat and the Steelers are very accommodating in that regard and just coffee and, and you know, the draft, you just scratch guys off. You don't really pay attention. You know, Mel Kuyper and those guys go on and on. It's, I don't know how people at home can listen to that. I know enough that I don't need to hear that. I just need to mark guys off and see who's coming down for the Steelers. If I'm doing a radio, you know, if I'm doing radio, that's helpful. If I'm not doing radio, just tweet some stuff. We'll look for the Steelers, these five guys. And, mm -hmm. and a draft day's fun. In, in 2003, 2003, we had a draft day. Now, that's when they picked three rounds. And the third round would get picked at like midnight. And really, you're past deadlines if you're working for newspapers. But if you're working online, you've still got to write. After midnight, you wait for the guy that calls in. Uh, the third round pick will call in and we interview him and then you write that up. And a lot of the newspaper guys at the bigger papers, they're done for the night. So that's where the us internet guys could get an advantage, getting that third rounder, but it's a pain. So that was 2003 and Pearl Jam was in town that night. And we were lamenting that we're gonna have to miss Pearl Jam because it is stupid third round pick, you know? And so, uh, they announce uh, they come in for the first round pick. The Steelers have traded up. They've traded their third round pick to draft Troy Polamalu. I'm like, oh, okay, so we got to go to work now instead of waiting to the end of the first round. It's time to go to work. Troy Polamalu, who's this guy? Okay, all right. Troy calls in. We do our interview and write it up. And all they got is a second round pick, and it's rolling around. It's coming quick. And I turned to Mike Pursuta, who works at DV. I said, hey, you wouldn't by any chance know anyone to get us Pearl Jam tickets at this time now that the third round pick's traded. He called, sure enough, three of us, we went, we, <laughs> thankfully they traded the third round pick and that's, that's how draft night 
can go. Yeah, perfect. That was that was the that was the best. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're always we, we got confirmation from Kevin. Kevin, we're not going to write this, but tell us, are you going to try to get back into the third round? Are you going to trade back into it? We want to know if we can leave. He goes, go ahead, you're good. Yeah, it's like your Christmas day. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to turn to not such a good note. So the Steelers have been struggling recently, and I just had to ask you, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the current state of the team? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, Mitch Trubisky had no chance. He was coming in following a legend, the only quarterback who never was booed in Pittsburgh. Um, and he was, he was transitioning before the first-round draft pick out of Pitt, a popular kid. Mitch Trubisky had no chance, and when things went bad for him, he was done. So it's, but the point I'm making is it's a rebuilding year, mm -hmm. and we all know it. And um, people can get frustrated at what's going on, but Kenny Pickett's playing. He's getting better each week. Uh, people may not believe that he's getting better and, and can grow into a championship quarter, but I see. I used it in my column the other day. I compared him to Jim McMahon. Physically, they seem very similar, and, and mentally and s spiritually, they seem s uh, the same. Uh, very um, intuitive, very heady, gritty, tough, mobile, uh, not the strongest arms, but they can will their teams to wins. And Jim McMahon's first season with the 82 Bears was 3-4 and four record, similar to what Pickett's going through right now. Um, but 82 turned into 85 when the, Bills, when the Bears fortified their lines. Uh, McMahon grew into uh, a guy that no one else could ride that Harley, is what I always like to say. And uh, that was a great team. And I, I, I can see the Steelers building around this quarterback in the same way. He, and, and similar, he's uh, built to uh, Tom Brady, too. He's not Ben Roethlisberger, the aircraft carrier, the huge guy that stands above everybody like Josh Allen for the Bills and can wheel your team to victory physically. Uh, Kenny Pickett is more of a mentally gritty, tough, and he's accurate. And he's people just need to be patient. Uh, this isn't mm -hmm. going to be the year, and this is what this is a draft year. Yeah, and, perfect, <laughs> and, perfect. But they did win, and it kind of ruined the great position they were ever had. It, right now they're tenth, and uh, they're three and six, and they got the Bears' second round pick, and that'll be a high pick. Mm -hmm. So uh, they can have a good draft coming up, and. That's helping my publicity. People Absolutely, don't yeah. really want to have come and talk about the Steelers. It's like, what are they looking at in the draft next yeah, April? Yeah, perfect. So everyone needs to get out and buy your book so that, who knows, maybe this upcoming draft, it'll be the next one you write about, the next big one. Right. It's funny. I, I talked to the, uh, uh, the, the publishing house, Triumph Publishing, uh, after the draft. They, they wanted the book done in March, so it was before the recent draft. And I, I called, I said, hey, you know, we can add a chapter on Kenny Pickett. He's really popular in this town. You could put him on the cover. Guy says, no, we did that in New York with Sam Darnold. And he busted out and has already been traded. So that book was total. He got, they go, we'll stick with T.J. Watt on the yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah, safe choice, <laughs> safe choice. But I think Pickett, Pickett's not included in this because I was after the deadline. But he's a popular guy and he was a good pick. And he's going to be a lot better than people probably think he's going to be at this point. Yeah, that, that's for your next draft book that you'll work on. Uh, I've got some ideas. I'm working on some other stuff, but maybe in 20 years, another yeah, draft book. Yeah, yeah, right. Perfect. Okay, so finally, are there any big takeaways you want sports fans to get from this book? Steelers fans, sports fans, just anyone in general? Well, um, you know, the draft is, the hist history of the draft is the history of the team. And so, you know, I, I went through the Hall of Famer, starting with Wizard White, the stories behind Wizard White, what led to them drafting him, uh, and, and how he became a Supreme Court justice. And I, I also, you know, in there at the end, I, I said, and the, the Washington Post has a, had a great writer at the time called, Shir his name was Shirley Povich, uh, legendary writer. And he wrote that Wizard White only lasted one season in Pittsburgh, but Art Rooney wanted to not only get a talented player, but he wanted to up the class of the National Football League and his franchise. And that's what he did. The guy became a chief justice, right? And um, so I, I called that the first uh, pillar of the Steeler way. And that's a future book, the Steeler's way. Uh, but, um, you know, the character matters and character is important and it upped the class and it didn't do much for the Steelers at the time, but he upped their class. And, and you can see that as you go along with each of these guys, Bill Dudley, Ernie Stautner, um, and, and, you know, into, boy, the 60s and the hiring of Bill Nunn, uh, battle uh, through racisms, 
Uh, Bill Nunn broke that up. Chuck Knoll broke that up. Then the class and character of all these great black college football players that Bill Nunn got for Chuck Knoll became the bedrock of four Super Bowls and just blew the NFL wide open with all that talent. And they weren't all from black colleges, but Bill Nunn had the keys to the kingdom. And it, it all explains how that process unfolded. Bill Nunn accused the Steelers of being racist. He didn't want to, he didn't want a job with them. He was a Cleveland Browns fan, even though he lived in Pittsburgh and was the editor, the great editor of the uh, Pittsburgh Courier, uh, the all-black newspaper. And so um, that's all important. So pe people need to understand all of that, how progressive the Steelers really were. And they let their coaches coach, and thus the charges of racism against Buddy Parker and Bill Austin by Bill Nunn. Um, but it wasn't, the Roonies let their coaches coach. And that's what they, you know, when Johnny Unitas was on the, in camp in 1955 or 54, I should know, I wrote the book, right? <laughs> <laughs> One of the, in the mid fifties, and they cut him without ever playing him in preseason. And the young Rooney boys were the ball boys. And one of them wrote to father who was away chasing horses. And he wrote to him, hey, this idiot coach is gonna, gonna cut Unitas. He's the best quarterback here and he hasn't even played him at all. Mm -hmm. And the chief wrote back, let the coaches coach. And that's another pillar of the Steelers way. It, it holds true to this day. The coach is in charge of all of it. And uh, so they cut Johnny Unitas and uh, all these, uh, uh, the draft tells the history and the history is full of the pillars, the fundamental pillars of how this organization was built and became the great organization it is. That's all the time we have for today. Once again, we would like to thank Jim for coming in to speak with us. Before we leave, why don't you take a moment and tell everyone where they can find your work? Uh, my work is at Steel City Insider or Steelers Digest. Steel City Insider is a subscription website and um, that's at CBS, CBS 247 Sports. And this book can be gotten at Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, you said Target? Target, right. yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it's in the stores. If it's in the stores, great. <laughs> great, I'll have some money to buy some, uh, some Christmas presents for some yeah. people if it, it's in the Targets. But um, uh, you can get uh, autographed. I can uh, inscribe personally, personally uh, to my nephew Billy for Christmas, have a good Christmas. I can write what you need or just make my own little message. Uh, that's at my website, jimwexel.com. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of UView Rundown. You can purchase Jim's new book, On the Clock, Pittsburgh Steelers, as well, of any of, as well as any of his past work at Amazon or Target, just in time for the holidays. These <laughs> books make the perfect gift for any Steelers fan in your life, and be sure to join us next week.